Hello, my name's Christopher, and today I'm going to go over installing Speed Test Tracker. Um, I did make a video on how to do this before, but I'm going to be going over it again because things did update. So, a little bit about this series, I'm going over home labs, or installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse. So go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So let's get back to your registered programming. So I'm going to be going over the updates to Speed Test Tracker, and I'm going to be installing it and getting it up and running. Um, there was updates like the Docker image changed. It changed over to Linux server. Um, so uh, I updated the Docker Impose on Bigger Video Assets, and um, you can get the new updates uh, right now. So I'm going to be going over installing it and getting it set up. Um, I, I want to keep the, all of my videos updated as much as possible. Uh, for the Big Bear community. So this is what I'll be installing today. So I'm going to be starting on Big Bear Video Assets and there will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to go over to search and type speed test tracker and I'm going to go to speed test tracker too because there was an original speed test tracker but it's uh, not maintained anymore so the, the new speed test tracker took over. So I'm going to go to the partainer one right here and then I'm going to go into the Docker Impose Speed Test Tracker 2. And then, um, so version 3.3 of Docker Impose file formats being used. I'm going to set some services. And then the first service underneath the services is called Speed Test Tracker. And then the container name is going to be called Speed Test Tracker. And this is so Docker doesn't have generated a random name. This is the image. It's coming off Linux server now. And this is the cha change. And then do, do, Docker image tag right here, so 025. Um, so ports are 8080 on the host. If this does collide with another port on your host, you can change it. Same goes with the 8443 uh, right here. Um, so um, on the left side is host. On the right side is a, cont a container path. Do not change the container's path. Um, so environment variables right here. So the app key, and you can generate a new app key on the homepage of Speed Test Tracker. It does it for you, and then you can co copy it and then paste it in here. So the user ID, 1,000, and the group ID, 1,000. The DB connection right here, and this should rhyme with the credentials down here. Um, so this service right here is storing data in this service. It's a, 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 relation, a relational database. It's MariaDB. Um, so the time zone is set right here and you can put this to your own time zone and then speed test a schedule and this is where you schedule a cron job to run the speed test. I have it right now running every 10 minutes but you can change it or you can do away with this and just have it run manually by you just pushing a button. So now volumes, uh, ETC local time on the host side and then on the container side is ETC lo local time. And it's set to read only. So now the speed test tracker config data is a local volume that's defined down here. And then um, uh, etc. Uh, no, it's a, a config right here on the cont a container. Do not change the container's path. Um, so sa same goes with this one. Um, so this is speed test tracker web data, and it's defined down here. Um, so restart and let's stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then we'll try to restart. And then now this service right here depends on this service right here. So now the service name is right underneath the services. So it's right in line. And that's important for a YAML file. Um, so a, D a DB is the service name. The image is MariaDB, and it's coming off of Docker by default because there's no year before this. And the same go uh, goes for up here, a Docker Hub. And then it's MariaDB for the Docker image, and then a, a 10 for the Docker image tag. And then restart always means if you stop it or any other reason or errors or anything, it'll always try to restart. 
so now environment variables, so MariaDB da a database, MariaDB user, MariaDB a password, and the MariaDB random root password. Um, when you when you initialize this service right here and create it, uh, these credentials can't be changed again. That, uh, you'll have to log into the da a database and change change them in there. Um, so with SQL. And then volumes right here, speed test tracker DB data. That's a local volume that's defined down here. And then var lib MySQL is on the container side. Do not change the container side. Um, so that looks good. So um, that's about the Docker and Pose. So now I'm going to start on my portainer and I'm going to go to local and then stacks, and then add stack up here. And then um, I'm gonna put a stack name in of uh, speed test tracker, and then I'm gonna add stack. So now, uh, Portainer stacks are just using Docker and Pose underneath, so it is using the, do the Docker engine. So now I'm gonna come down here to the web editor, and I'm going to paste in the Docker and Pose that I explained over in Big Bear Video Assets. Um, so, now you can go ahead and ch uh, change this by going uh, to the website. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it and it greatly supports this channel and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So I'm gonna go to the website now. So I copied it from here. And I put it into my browser and I'm gonna go to it. So so now you can see that it generated the app key down here. So I can just click it and then um, we're gonna go back to our portainer and uh, paste this in. So now I'm back over at my portainer and I'm going to highlight this and I'm gonna paste in the new one. So now we've changed the app key. So I'm going to go ahead and um, t tell you, you can change the uh, DB password right here. Um, and now when you ch I change this up here, uh, you have to change this so it can connect to it. Um, so you can ch uh, change it right there and you can change it right there. And you can also change the time zone. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, deploy the stack. So now we've deployed the stack and it's up and running. So now I'm gonna go over the stacks and the containers in Portainer. So if you go in the stack right here, uh, I, you'll see an, a stack, an editor, and then you'll see actions down here, stop the stack, delete the stack, create template from the stack, stack duplication slash migration. And then you can go over the editor right here and you can edit the Docker and Pose. This is great for uh, creating a Docker and Pose and being able to uh, test it um, so you can come down here and update the stack and you can repull image and redeploy and that means that it'll repull the image uh, uh, freshly off the registry and then bring it down and then you'll get the new code if uh, the developer pushed an update to that exact same tag right here. Um, this is great for like a latest tag. So um, now you can see the containers in the stack. You can see the speed test tracker and then the speed test tracker uh, DB down here and access control. So you can go into each container right here and you can see actions for the container. Start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, duplicate slash edit. And then you can see container status right here. The ID, the name, the status, the cr uh, cr created and start time. And then you can see logs down here. This is great for debugging. And then inspect, stats, console, attach, access, control, and then create image down here. And then the container details like the image, uh, the port configuration, the left side is the host, the right side is the container. And then command, entry point, the environment variables, and then the labels right here. And then a restart policy, I would recommend ch changing it directly in the Docker Compose though. But you can ch uh, change it right here. And then volumes. So the host and then the path in the cont uh, container. And then it created a network down here. 
so if we go backwards, we can go into the DB, and it's the uh, same thing. Actions, container status, access control, create image, and then container details are different, but uh, the image, a command, and entry point, the environment variables, and then labels right here, restart policy, and then volumes, and then networks. So that's a little bit about the uh, stacks in Portainer. So now I'm going to go to the UI and I'm going to uh, put HTTPS and then the IP and then the port is 8443 and you know that because of published port down here. Um, so I'm going to go to it and log in. So, so now you'll get a uh, connection is not private and that's because it's using a self-signed certificate. So I'm going to go to advanced and then proceed. So now I'm going to put the email address as admin at example.com and then the password is password and then I'm going to sign in so now I got signed in so now you can see on the home page it's been doing a, a, two, a two speed test so, so download upload and then ping the download and then the upload and then the ping and jitter upload latency and then download la latency so um, you can go to the results over here, and you can see that, uh, that there was two, uh, two ran, and then you can see server ID for Eucla, and then the server. Um, so you can go over here, and you can view on speedtest.net, view, update comments, and then delete it. Um, you can go over here to users, and you can add a, a new user, a name, email, password, and then the role. And then you can come in here and create uh, and create another. I'm going to cancel. So you can use InfluxDB, and you can enable it, put the URL, the org, bucket, and then token. Notifications, you can enable database notifications, Discord, mail, te Telegram, and a web a webhooks. Um, thresholds, so you can enable a th a absolute thresholds right here. A download, upload, ping. Um, you can see the documentation, donate, and then GitHub. Um, so you can go over here and you can see notifications. And then you can see profile. So you can go to the profile, name, email address, and then a, pa a password. You can put a new password in and then save changes. I would recommend you doing that. Um, so you can come over here and enable light theme, uh, a dark theme, and then the system, so you can go back and forth. Um, you can sign out right here. So that's a little bit about Speed Test Tracker's UI. So I just went over step by step on getting Speed Test Tracker running on Portainer. Um, this is the new uh, updated do Docker image. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or any community support, you can go out in the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.